What if a single tunnel could redefine travel between Scandinavia and Central Europe? The Fimarn Belt Fixed Link, an 18-kilometer immersed tunnel beneath the Baltic Sea, is set to become the world's longest underwater road and rail connection. Stretching 40 meters below sea level, it will link Denmark and Germany, cutting travel time to just 7 minutes by train or 10 minutes by car. With a budget of $8.7 billion, this engineering marvel promises faster, greener, and more reliable transportation, saving over two hours between Copenhagen and Hamburg. It is designed to handle modern transportation demands, boasts two rail tracks and a two-lane motorway, all while incorporating cutting-edge safety and environmental measures. As construction races towards completion by 2029, this ambitious project is poised to transform the region's infrastructure. But how does such a colossal undertaking come to life beneath the waves? Let's find out. For decades, travelers between Denmark and Germany have relied on ferries crossing the Fimarn Belt, an 18-kilometer stretch of water linking the Danish island of Lowlands to the German island of Fimarn. Here, on the southern tip of Denmark, on the island of Lowlands, your journey begins. From this vantage point, look across the waters to Fimarn, where the German coastline awaits. This expanse of the Baltic Sea serves as a crucial connector between Scandinavia and mainland Europe. Yet, despite its importance, the ferry system has long been a bottleneck. Why? With ferries shuttling back and forth, delays caused by long queues, unpredictable weather, and the time-intensive loading and unloading process have turned what could be a quick passage into an exercise in patience. A solution to streamline this link between Scandinavia and Central Europe became a pressing need. The idea of a fixed connection across the Fimarn Belt has been discussed for decades. As early as the 1960s, infrastructure projects began connecting nearby areas, such as the German island of Fimarn to the mainland and the Danish island of Lolland to Zeeland. However, it wasn't until the late 1990s that the concept of a direct connection across the strait gained traction. Initial plans envisioned a massive bridge combining roadways and rail tracks, with early feasibility studies suggesting this was the most practical solution. By the early 2000s, the project began to take shape, with designs and proposals circulating on both sides of the strait. Then came a pivotal decision in 2010. After extensive analysis, experts determined that an immersed tunnel would be a better option than a bridge. Why the change? The tunnel, created by submerging pre-constructed segments into a seabed trench, was deemed safer, more cost-effective, and better suited to the natural landscape. High winds, a challenge for bridges, would no longer be a concern, and the tunnel's low-profile design promised minimal disruption to the region's scenic beauty. By 2011, the tunnel plan was officially approved, and groundwork soon began. Today, this engineering marvel is steadily taking form, promising to revolutionize travel between Denmark and Germany. It's set to replace the ferry entirely, cutting travel time across the Fimarn Belt to just 10 minutes by car and 7 minutes by train. This transformation, however, is only the beginning of its far-reaching impact, linking Scandinavia and Central Europe like never before. The construction process begins with the creation of the tunnel elements, each weighing an astonishing 73,000 tons and measuring 217 meters long, 42 meters wide, and 10 meters high. How are such massive components made? It all starts at a state-of-the-art factory built specifically for this project in Denmark. Spanning an impressive 1 million square meters, this facility boasts six production lines capable of handling the creation of 79 standard elements and 10 special elements. But that's not all. The factory also includes a dedicated panel factory, where steel rebar is meticulously cut, welded, and assembled into the intricate frameworks that form the backbone of each segment. What happens once the steel frameworks are ready? They're transported to the casting area, where high-strength concrete is poured with extraordinary precision. This isn't your typical construction process. 
Continuous monitoring ensures consistency as every segment must meet rigorous standards for durability. To maintain optimal conditions, the climate-controlled production halls carefully regulate temperature and humidity. The curing process, which lasts 30 to 60 hours, is supported by specialized concrete batching plants capable of producing up to 600 cubic meters of concrete per hour, an industrial feat of remarkable scale. But how do these enormous segments float despite their immense weight? After curing, they are fitted with waterproof bulkheads at both ends, enabling buoyancy. From there, the segments are moved into adjacent basins, enormous transition zones between the factory and the sea. These basins can be flooded to allow the segments to float, with water levels controlled by massive gates. When the time comes, specialized tugboats tow the segments out to sea, setting the stage for their eventual immersion. The immersion process is a delicate and highly coordinated operation. A trench approximately 40 meters deep and spanning the 18-kilometer route has been dredged across the seabed. Advanced GPS technology guides the placement of the segments, ensuring alignment with an accuracy of just 15 millimeters. The trench itself was created using specialized dredging equipment, including trailing suction hopper dredgers for deeper areas and grab dredgers for more precise excavation. The excavation material, totaling 19 million cubic meters, is being repurposed to create a new coastal area near the construction site. Once positioned in the trench, the segments are connected using giant rubber gaskets that ensure watertight seals. A secondary membrane, installed from within, provides an additional layer of protection against water ingress. During this phase, the segments are stabilized with temporary steel braces, which are later removed to allow the structure to adjust naturally to underwater pressures. After placement, the segments are covered with layers of gravel and protective material to secure them on the seabed. The construction also includes critical onshore components, such as travel portals and ramps. These structures facilitate the transition between land and the underwater tunnel. On the Danish side, a light attenuation structure is being built to help drivers adjust to the change in lighting conditions as they enter or exit the tunnel. Similarly, on the German side, upgrades to the road and rail networks are underway to ensure seamless connectivity with the tunnel. Safety features are a cornerstone of the tunnel's design. The two main tubes, one for each direction of travel, are separate, minimizing the risk of collisions. Each tube includes an emergency lane, and cross passages between the road and rail tunnels provide evacuation routes. But what happens in the event of an emergency? The entire tunnel will be monitored round the clock from control centers on both sides, with dynamic traffic signs and surveillance systems ensuring real-time management of any incidents. In such cases, passengers can be evacuated safely via designated exits leading to secure areas. Now, let's dive deeper into another critical component, air quality. Ventilation systems play a crucial role in maintaining air quality within the tunnel. The primary mechanism relies on the piston effect generated by the movement of vehicles to draw fresh air through the tubes. But is this enough to ensure safety in all situations? Supplementary mechanical ventilation systems, including large fans, are in place to handle situations where traffic slows or stops. Shifting gears, let's explore the project's sustainability initiatives. The Femarn Belt Fixed Link also demonstrates a strong commitment to sustainability. The design minimizes environmental impact, both during construction and operation. Extensive environmental assessments were conducted to ensure the project adheres to stringent ecological standards. Measures include the creation of new habitats for marine life, such as artificial reefs, and the use of dredged material to expand coastal wetlands. Once operational, the tunnel will significantly reduce CO2 emissions by shortening travel distances and shifting freight transport from trucks to more sustainable electric trains. The project has not been without its challenges. What does it take to coordinate such an ambitious undertaking? Coordinating such a massive endeavor across two countries requires meticulous planning and collaboration. Weather conditions, particularly in the Baltic Sea, pose a constant risk to the immersion and alignment of the tunnel segments. 
Managing a workforce of over 2,000 people, including many temporary workers, housed in purpose-built accommodations near the construction site, adds another layer of complexity. Logistical hurdles, such as transporting raw materials and maintaining the production schedule, require careful oversight. Despite these obstacles, the project is making steady progress. The entire link is scheduled for completion in 2029. Once operational, it will transform travel between Denmark and Germany, reducing the journey from 45 minutes by ferry to just 10 minutes by car or 7 minutes by train. The connection will also slash travel time between Copenhagen and Hamburg from 4.5 hours to 2.5. By combining cutting-edge technology with a commitment to sustainability, this project sets a new benchmark for large-scale infrastructure. It promises to revolutionize transportation across Northern Europe, creating economic opportunities and fostering deeper connections between countries. As the world watches, the Femarn Belt Fixed Link is poised to become a defining symbol of progress in the 21st century. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more updates.